It's me. I've come to see the young lady, Miss Sperling. Hey, you want to take cover? There's a raid on. Don't worry at all, Mr. Presty. I've got a lucky birthmark. <laughs> this place gets hidden. Goodbye to you and the two lodgers. Oh, it's you. Wanted to see me, Mona. You mustn't stay too long. The wife gets panicky when there's a blitz. I should worry about her. Hello, Louise. Hello. I'm going down to the shelter, Mona. Are you coming? No, I want to talk to Pat. Shouldn't waste much time on him. What's the matter with her? Oh, it's just the way she talks. Scotland. What lucky devil's up there? You've no call to go reading my private correspondence. You're up at your high horse tonight, Mona. What's the matter with you? What's it all about? I need some money, Pat. A lot. Well, I haven't got a lot of money. What you want it for? I think I'm going to have a child. That's what's for. Two hours. I've been straight in the Hello, boat. Paul. Well, I got worried about you. I've been much heavier tonight. Very well. Yeah, worried. Mary, it was super. Whee! Boom! Hank will. Boom! Out. Here comes a bomb. Wow! Oh, no, don't. Now look at this. Do you never put soap on your hands when you wash them? <laughs> I'll get a clean one. See that he washes himself. All right. Washing? That's all she ever thinks about. No, no, don't talk about your mother like that. That boat's too small. I'll make you a big one. A wonderful one. Now then. Yeah, that's it. See who it is, will you? There's nobody in the house. All right. I'm clean this side. No, you're not. Now do what your mother tells you. Daddy's making me another boat. Oh, good. Then you'll have the whole fleet. Then I can sink all the German Navy. <laughs> Patrick Mathry? That's right. I'm Detective Inspector Dale. This is Sergeant Swan. We're investigating the death of a Miss Mona Sperling. Mona? You mean, she killed herself? Our information is that you visited her this evening, Mr. Mathry. Is that right? Yes. I, I, I called on her. Well, then perhaps you'll be able to help us. I dare say you'd prefer to answer questions down at the station, though. Yes, I think maybe I would. Have the car here, Mr. Matthew. Wouldn't be better. Outside. Here's your boat, son. The Queen Mary. Oh, good. I'll be able to talk to her. I've got to go out now, Paul, so be a good boy and go to bed when your mother tells you. Good night. Sailing far, 
On the stormy great sea. How does it look to you, Paul? What? Fine old city of Liverpool. How does it look to you now? 20 years, hey, Doc. I really don't remember. My mother never talked much about things that happened to us before we were evacuated. Yeah. I guess the bombing must have changed things quite a bit. Oh, I, you sure have got a problem finding your old man here in just four days. I don't know why you should be so crazy to find your father. Me? I sail halfway around the world getting away from mine. <laughs> yeah. Honey, oh, honey. I just want to clear things up. If you could tell me where I could find Mr. Albert Prusty, or if he's still alive. I think he's still alive. It's me. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I didn't know Mr. Prusty. I... <laughs> My name is Paul Mathry. I hope you don't mind me asking a lot of questions, but do you own this place? Have you lived here long? Forty years about. I've had this shop. I've lived here, too. You were here during the war, then? In the war? Yeah. You see, Mr. Prusty, the reason I'm here is because of this letter. It mentions your address. My parents used to live in Liverpool at the beginning of the war. I was born over here. This letter's from Mr. Enoch Oswald. Yes, do you know him? No, of him, of course. Everyone's heard of Mr. Oswald. Very important man. President of the Liverpool Welfare Association. Does a lot of charity. Ah, uh, Eagle, my dear. You own the whole of the North Star Shipping Company, too. You've heard of that? Oh, yes, sir. Hope the tragic events of 52 Usher Place will soon be forgotten. It seems that this welfare association must have helped my mother when we evacuated to the States. Your mother, was it? Mm hmm Is that what you said your name was, Mathry? You remember now? Yes. I can see it now. Patrick Mathry's son. You know him, then? I'm not likely to forget him. So now you see why Mr. Oswald wrote this letter to your mother. He organized the petition, you know. What petition? After the trial. That's why he wasn't hanged, you see, for murder. He saved your father's life, really. Ah, oh, Jimmy, same as usual. Ah. Two ounces of golden leaf. No, that's right, man. That's funny. That American chap. <laughs> Seems in a eye, eh? Yeah. He wasn't hanged, you see, for the murder, for the murder. For the murder. I don't know why you should be so crazy to find your father, find your father, find your father. For the murder, for the murder. See it now. Patrick Mathry's son. Mathry's son. Mathry's what you want a copy of the paper for every day in 1941. Oh, thank you. Mm. Oh, did you sign the reader's ticket? Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. Just leave it on the desk when you're finished. Right, thank you.
Sorry, I'm afraid we're closing now, sir. We've got to close now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I, oh, I feel kind of dizzy. I haven't eaten since breakfast. I guess I did too much reading. Sorry, we have to turn you out. Oh, say, you wouldn't know where I could find a bed for the night, would you? I just sailed in from New York this morning, and I haven't had time to get fixed up yet. It doesn't have to be the Ritz, either. Well, no, I... Oh, that shouldn't be difficult. Lena, what about your landlady? Doesn't you have a spare room? Oh, no. Why didn't you go home with this young lady now and see? Good night, Lena. Yes, good night, Mr. Fisher. Well, you best come with me. Thank you. This is it. This is where I live. I hope your landlady won't mind. You better explain the situation. She's had a meal all day to start with. I don't know, Mrs. Hanley. We only sailed into Liverpool this morning. Well, this ought to do him a bit of good. Do you know, I've never had an American in this house before. Let's hope he likes decent food and no nonsense. Not like that Pharisee we had here once, remember? Oh, see, Mrs. Hanley. He was an Indian. Well, he was a bit too particular about his food. <laughs> Why don't you take it up to him, Lena? I'm sure he'd rather see you than an old fogey like me. No, Mrs. Henley, I'd rather not. Oh, Lena, surely you're not still thinking... No. That... Lena, what happened to you is over and forgotten. You've got to stop being frightened. Yes, I'll, I'll take it. Oh, he's a good girl. You take it up to him before it gets too cold. And I'll get on with ours. Come in. Oh, Mrs. Hanley made you some supper. Oh, that's very kind of a... I could have gone out someplace. Well, come in, please, come in. I haven't really thanked you enough for all you've done for me. It's quite all right. Oh, please don't go. I'd like to talk to somebody. All right. I don't know if you'll understand, but... Yes, I think I do. I saw what you were reading in the library. My father, a murderer. They didn't even hang him. You would have thought at least they could have done that. Are you sorry your father's still alive? No. But all my mother ever told me about him was lies. I always thought my father died a hero, fighting in the war. And today I find out that I'm a murderer's son. Well, you're somebody's son. Look, whatever he's done, he's certainly paid for it by now. Oh, I know how you feel. You keep telling yourself, why me? Why did it have to happen to me? So what's the answer? Don't pity yourself. That's the first lesson, the very first. Then you have a right to object if somebody else starts to pity you. You better eat your supper. It's getting cold. Where is your father now? Oh, Wakefield Prison. Uh, at least that's where they said they sent him. Where is that? Oh, in, in Yorkshire. It's not far away. Why don't you go there? To the prison? Yes. Don't you see? It's your chance to talk to him. Maybe you could understand things better. That's an idea. I'll go there tomorrow and try to see him. Paul Matt. Yes, sir. This way, sir. Who is my father, sir? I think I ought to know before I see him. Your father's been a very difficult prisoner, a rebel. He never seems to have accepted even the fact of his sentence. With remissions, he could have been a free man by now. Maybe when he sees me, it'll be of some help to him. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Not possible? Last week, your father attacked a warder. It was a violent assault, completely unjustified. I ordered ten days solitary confinement. But I can't wait. I'm only in this country while my ship is turning around. If I don't see my father I'm now... I'm afraid that is the rule. Prisoners in solitary confinement cannot have visitors. It's impossible to make an exception. Sir, I don't think you realize... I'm sorry, I quite understand your feelings. Oh, no, sir. You understand the regulations. And the regulations are very important. 
When you take people, all right, all right, you take murderers, and you shut them up. You put them in little boxes, cold, gray ice boxes, and you shut them away. Then you have to remember the regulations. Because if you don't, you get to remember that before they were murderers, they were people. Like, like my father and your father. And then you, you think what you've been doing to them all those years in those boxes. That's why you have to have the regulations. Come in. I suppose we all feel like that sometimes. But the prison rules must be observed. I'm sorry. I still don't understand. I've got to find out more. No, no, I don't mind showing you no trouble at all. I'm glad you came again. I wouldn't have spoken like that, you know. I didn't realize. I know, Mr. Frosty. Of course. I've got the electricity now in the rest of the house, but uh, up there it didn't seem worthwhile. Well, some people rented it now and then, but nobody stayed long, you know, once they find out. Wait a bit, I'll just find the key. There were two girls just in the apartment, weren't there? Two? Yes, two. There was a Sperling girl, of course, Mona Sperling. She was murdered. The other one was... Uh, I mean, would you mind trying them for me? My eyesight, you know, it's not as good as it was. Sure. The other was Miss Burt, Louise Burt. We'd been to the air raid shelter. There was a raid on, you see. When we got back, this man, he pushed past me on the stairs. It was dark. Oh, yes, very dark. Well, we had a torch, you know. Miss Burt had a torch. I didn't see him properly. I said so at the trial. Have you ever been in a witness box? No, sir. They tie you in knots. Half the time you don't know what you're saying, and the other half they don't let you say what you want. Miss Burt, she was so positive it was your father. Me, uh, with my eyes, I, I couldn't be sure. I couldn't swear. <laughs> Get that naughty Tompkins. Where are you, you bad puss? Here he is. <laughs> it's the mice, you know. He's always after them up here. I'll just light the lamp if there's any oil in it. <laughs> here, let me take him. He's a wonderful mouser. Caught a rat up here once as big as himself. So this is where you found her? Yes. Uh, Louise found her, of course. It was all very upsetting. She'd been strangled, you see. And you called the police? Yes. Two men came. Dale was one. He, he's a chief superintendent now, a very big man. The other one? Now, what was his name? It was something about a postcard. Yes. That's what your father said. A postcard on the mantelpiece with a picture on it. A sprig of heather. He said it had come from Edinburgh. He thought it was from another man. <laughs> I remember the prosecutor, Sprott. Sir Matthew Sprott he is now. He was very sarcastic about that. A figment of Irish imagination, he called it. He said, an Irishman and a Scotsman, there should be a Welshman too. Made some of the jury laugh with that. Great sense of humor. Well, of course, it was never found. The postcard, I mean. What was his name now? I can't seem to remember it. Who? The other man, the policeman. I only saw him once afterwards. That was a funny thing, him coming back like that. How do you mean? Well, it was one evening, oh, a long time after. I was just closing up the shop, and he came in and stood there looking round. Yes? Well, it seemed to me he'd had a few too many. He said something about burning his boats. Burning your boats and landing in the drink. And then he looked at me in a funny sort of way and said, what's done can't be undone. You remember that. And then he went. Are you sure you can't remember his name? Drake? No. Uh, it'll come to me in a minute. My memory's not as good as it was. Have you seen all you want up here? Uh, yes, we might as well go on down now. Strange is coming back like that. What's done can't be undone. Swan. That's it. He was called Swan. Swan. James Swan. He was a sergeant then. Detective Sergeant Swan. I'd like to talk to him if I could find him. Kind of fits in with what I've been thinking. All right, Donkins. I'll give you your milk downstairs. Could you tell me which court Swan is in? Swan, James Swan. Yes. Hey, which court is Swan Number in? Number two. Should be on now. Thank you.
your particular case, there's no excuse for your behavior. You of all people should know the rules, but for some reason best known to yourself, you slipped into this disgraceful way of life. I cannot accept your explanation. Which one is And it seems obvious to me that you're quite unprepared to make the slightest effort to change your way of life. I warn you, James Swan, this is your last chance. Forty shillings or seven days. Time to pay, Your Honor. No. Next case. Thomas Ryan. Does that mean he doesn't have any money? Either he pays his money or he goes to prison. People make mistakes. Everyone knows that. Do you think there was a mistake in my father's case? I had my doubts about it for a long time. It didn't stick out my neck till it was too late. That was the trouble. Were you the only one who had doubts? What about the chief detective, uh, Dale? Dale? Huh. Dale never had a doubt in his life. He used to boast he could spot a criminal a mile off. Right from the start, he spotted your father. But why? Everything was against him. That's why. He was the last person to be seen with the girl, and she was pregnant. But he explained at the trial that he hadn't known her long enough. Denied. Denied. My most important witness, little Louise Bart. And the jury believed her. Son. Jury believe what they are told. Your father's counsel was a senile, half-baked, crumbling old windbag. His death was an act of mercy to the criminal classes. But what about the, the prosecutor, Sprott? Sprott? Oh, yes. Very smart lad. He was unknown then. This was his first big case. He meant to make his reputation with it. And he did. As soon as he stood up in that court, I knew he meant to hang your father. The words flowed out of his mouth and cast a spell upon the court. I tell you, he was masterly. The jury hung on his every word. It's good a knighthood now. They're running a country before long. No one catches up with him. But there still had to be the witnesses. Two. Only two that mattered. Prosty. Nice old Dodrell. Sprott tied him in knots. That leaves little Louise Bart. Then it was her evidence that counted. Oh, yes. Oh, she fell out of nest, all right. Look at her now. Over the river there. New Brighton. Runs a nice little drinking club. Grapevine, they call it. There's real justice for you, son. Your father went down. Little Louise went up. You mean somebody fixed her, paid her to give evidence against my father? Oh, but who would have done a thing like that? Son, you've got an awful lot to learn. An awful lot, Fink. Wait a minute. Same again, Joe. What have I got to learn? You want to find the real murderer? The guy who paid her off, and you know who he is. I don't know anything. Yeah, Jimmy. Did you have enough, you know? That's the last. OK. I know better places. Trouble. That's all it ever meant to me. Trouble. You won't tell me anymore. I can't force you to. What's this? That's where you can find me for the next couple of days in case you change your mind. 
And now I'm going to try to find the man who prosecuted at my father's trial. And tell him exactly what you've told me. Strutt? Yes. Sir Matthew Strutt? You're going to talk to him? It's just what I'm going to do. I think he ought to know that his star witness, Louise Burt, committed perjury. Son, I wish you luck. Your support, my friend. I'm not worried about the selection committee. Not at all. They usually act on my advice, Sir Matthew. I'm convinced in you we have the next member of parliament for this division. Is he liable to be much longer? I really can't say. You made no appointment. Sir Matthew is still in conference. By elections are always unexpected. Well, I'm ready for the adoption committee at any time. Thank you. Who the devil are you? Oh, I'm sorry to bust in on you like this, but uh, I haven't got much time. My name is Mathry. Paul Mathry. I tried to stop him, Sir Matthew. All right, Miss Williams. I suppose, as a politician, I may have to get used to all kinds of intrusion. Anyway, we finished our talk. You can take it from me, it's in the bag. Good, good. We must have dinner together sometime next week. Uh, delighted. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ah, tell me, just what gives you the right to burst into my chambers in the middle of most important and private business? You know who I am. Your name has certain associations. Yes. Sir Matthew, 20 years ago, you put the case against my father on a charge of murder. He was convicted. Yes. Yes. The star witness at that trial was a girl named Louise Burt. From what I've just been told, it seems to me quite possible that she committed perjury. From what you've just been told? I suppose you realize you're making a serious accusation on hearsay. I think my informant knew what he was talking about. He was the other detective on the case, James Swan. Swan? Now, I understand. Swan, a drunken good-for-nothing with a chip on his shoulder as big as his thirst. He was kicked out of the police force, do you know why? For being drunk on duty. Ever since he's been a constant source of trouble, clattering in the courts. So he is the one who's been feeding you this nonsense. I believe this nonsense, Sir Matthew. My father told the truth. You listen to me. The case I made against your father was as solid as rock. I'd stake my whole career on that. And I'm not a fool. No, you're not a fool. You put your case very well. I read about it. But that case was built on flimsy evidence. The bribery of a perjured witness. Fantastic. Fantastic or not, you could have been wrong. Look at this thing again with an open mind. I know you'll be convinced. But I'm not convinced. You won't even listen to me. I have listened to quite enough. You burst in here making wild accusations like a child who wants to pull a whole building down because he thinks one brick in the foundations was badly laid. If the foundation is rotten, the building falls. Where the devil is that woman? Yes, Miss sir. Williams, show Mr. Mathry out. My advice to you, my friend, is to stop meddling in things you don't understand and get back home. Where do you come from, by the way? I'm an American. Really? My ship is just turning around here. Well, I haven't the time to argue with you. I convinced a jury 20 years ago, and that's good enough for me. I'm going to try to see Mr. Enoch Oswald now. He saved my father from the gallows. Maybe you didn't quite convince him. Chief Superintendent, yeah? Dale, cast your mind back 20 years. The Mathry case. One of your most successful cases, Sir Matthew. The son. Yes, yes, of course. She was evacuated to the States during the war, wasn't she? Did. Swan. No, I don't like the sound of that at all. I don't know what to think, I'm sure. I'm sorry to hear about your mother. She died very young. Yes, she, she worked hard all of her life to give me a good home and a high school education. Well, you must go on making good use of that. Yes. Do you intend to? Yes, I do, Mr. Oswald. I'm studying electronics. Oh, really? The only reason I joined the ship was to see some of the world and to uh, try to clear up this mystery about what happened to my father. Yes, and when you landed in Liverpool, well, you found you'd taken on rather more, hmm? <laughs> Yes, but that was kind of unexpected. Mm. Paul. Are you familiar with the words used in British law for the sentence of death? No, sir. Well, like all good prose, they have a great simplicity, and in this case, a fearful simplicity. Mm, as I remember it, it is the verdict... No, no, it's better than that. It is the judgment of this court that you'll be taken from this place to another place, and thence to a place of execution, there to be hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Well, your father escaped all that. But the judgment of men can be harsh, too, Mr. Oswald. My father escaped from the gallows, and I'm grateful to you for that. Oh. But 
When I saw that prison, where he is now, where he has been all these years, that's a terrible thing to do to any man. To an innocent man, it could be worse than death. Yes, acceptance, acceptance of our destiny, that's something we all have to learn. But my father never accepted that sentence, and neither do I. I believe he's innocent, Mr. Oswald, and I'm going to go on searching till I find somebody who can help me to prove that. Can't you help me? There must be a way. Yes, but what way? Now, you must know that the machinery of the law, well, it's like the mills of God. It grinds exceeding small and very slowly. That's what I mean. I haven't got much time. I, I must have help. Perhaps a letter to the Home Secretary. The Home Secretary? No, better still. Go straight to the Fountainhead. I have um, a couple of friends in the House of Commons, a question in the House to the Home Secretary. I'll bring the matter up myself. Oh, that'd be great. If you could get him released, I'd come back to England right away. I'd talk to him, and we'd work on this thing together. Well, I really will do my best. Well, goodbye. I hope very much to see you soon. Oh, I'm sure of it, Mr. Oswald. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks. Handy, Lena Hall, I want to talk to her. Yes, she's been home more than an hour. I called her down to speak to that man who came round for you. What man? It was Swan. He wouldn't stay. He just left a message. Message? Yes, he said, uh, uh, tell him I've changed my mind and, and I'll meet him in the usual place. That's all. Oh, that's wonderful. Maybe he's going to talk, Lena. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Oh, it's not just like a man. And me after making a real Lancashire hot pot for him, too. Well, never mind, Mrs. Hanley. This is very important to him. You did. You did, I tell you. You just tell me when, you flannel face loafer. You just tell me when. Sammy Roach never welched on anyone. I'll pay a hundred to one. Now, don't I? You're a lousy welcher. I place my bet with you here, in this very room, and you know it. Oh, stop bothering me. Mr. Swan, I got your message. Lousy welcher. Run him in once. Getting his own back, that's all. Come on, I'll buy you a drink, huh? What's you again? What is it now? You know what I want. To get my father out. He's been buried alive for 20 years. Son, once you're in that grave, you'll never get out. But I can get him out. But just one word from you, the murderer's name. Get my money. Get my money out of You've that well, Jim. If it's the last what? thing I do. Pay up, you lazy welcher. you. Pay up and go to hell. All right, Swan. You are. That is the fight. You get up, bud. That way you. Oh. and in my view was not in full possession accident. of his faculties. Yes, sir, I see. Is that what you said? Very yes, good, sir. more or less. Mr. Mathry? Yes? Chief Superintendent would like a word with you, at headquarters. With me? What for? Yes? They brought that man round from Hyde Street Station, sir. Paul Mathry. Send him in. Mr. Mathry, sir. Come in, my boy. I want to see you, and this seemed as good an opportunity as any. Why are you so interested in me, Superintendent? We don't need to go into that. You know who I am, and I know quite a bit about you. Now, look here, my lad. I've got a pretty fair idea what you must feel about me. A man who helped put your father behind bars. But I was only doing my duty. Your father's just one of hundreds that have been through my hands. In fact, I'd forgotten all about him until you came along. It wouldn't be quite so easy for my father to forget about you. You were with Swan tonight, I hear, when he was killed. Yes, I was. I could have warned you about Swan. But he's dead now, and he can't do anyone any more harm. But if you'll take my advice... I don't want your advice about choosing my friends. Maybe you don't, my lad. Maybe you don't. 
But I'm going to give you one bit of advice, and I don't want you to forget it. My job is the prevention of crime. Get that? Seeing trouble before it comes. Now I've seen you, and I'm a good judge, and I reckon you're the sort can give me trouble. So here's my advice to you in one word. Don't. Do I make myself clear? You stick to your ship tight until she sails. Because I'm warning you, if I have one complaint about you, I'll be sorry for you. And you'll be very sorry for yourself. Is that all you had to say? That's all. When does she sail, by the way? The day after tomorrow. Then make sure you sail with her. Send Trevor in. Yes, sir. I've got a job for you, Trevor. Yes, sir? I don't know, Lena. I just can't seem to put it into words, but I'm sure that Swan knew. At least he had a theory. And you think that somehow this, this girl had, had something to do with it? Yeah, Louise Burt. But she's not likely to help us any either. Unless... What? Why, she'd never recognize me. She, she doesn't know what I look like. It's an outside chance, but it could be worth taking. Where did Swan say she was now? The, the Brighton or someplace across the river. Oh, New Brighton. That's it. The Grapevine Club. She runs the joint or something. If I could go over there and get her talking, it, it might pay off. What do you think? Oh, well, whenever you get an idea, I couldn't stop you. I get lots of ideas, Lena. I hope they catch on. Do you want some brandy? Please. You sure you're safe for that thing? <laughs> oh, oh, look what you made me do. Let me see, let me see. Oh. Oh, you're not a hospital case. Yeah, you know what you do with that? Mm -hmm. I'll show you. Oh, no, please. <sighs> What's the matter? I wasn't going to hurt you. All right, then. Tomorrow, I go to New Brighton, right? You could take the ferry boat. You know, I, I just don't understand. We, we seem to get along so fine, and then all of a sudden... I'm sorry, Paul. I don't understand. What is it? Well, I just don't like being touched, that's all. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't explain. Sir? No, I'm not. Well, this is a member's club, sir. Oh, that'll be all right. You miss Louise's guest. you've got there. I like poodles. Hiya, baby. What's your name, huh? What's yours? Oh, I meant your dog. I know. 
His name's Jackie. What shows? Paul. Paul Shipman. Mine's Louise. Now we're all friends. I'm, uh, I'm just over here from the States. I'm a newspaper man, getting an angle on this country from the point of view of American tourists. Low-budget vacations, all that sort of thing. It's a nice place you've got here. I kind of go for these English pubs. It's not a pub, it's a club. My club. Oh, oh they're all the same to me. Do you live here? I've got a bungalow. It's not far, you ought to come and see it sometime. I'd like to, but I'm afraid I haven't got much time. I'm sailing for home tomorrow. Too bad. I'd like to have seen your place. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, how come you own a place like this? Uh, I work hard and I know the right people. You're a smart girl, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? What? I like Americans. No, really? <laughs> I like Louise's. Mm. Too bad I have to leave tomorrow. My car's outside. And I'm a safe driver. Really? Mm. That's pretty hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Kid me just now about that murder story. I found the body. I was the star witness at the trial. No kidding. Who got killed? My girlfriend. She was strangled. I found her. Hey, that's quite a story. Excuse me. Where are you going? Get another drink. Mine too. So you found the body, huh? It was all in the newspapers. I picked you, too. I bet that jury really fell for you, huh? You and those big, beautiful eyes. <laughs> I'll show you, if you like. What? Oh, I kept them all. All the bits about me, anyway. You mean newspaper clippings? <laughs> yeah, I've got them all. Oh, I take a professional interest in them. Aren't you? I wouldn't show everybody these. <laughs> Not a bit mixed up. Me. I was only a youngster there. <laughs> That's nearly all about me. Eighteen-year-old sales girl, Louise Burt, gave evidence that when she returned from the air raid shelter, she passed the accused on the stairs. They tried to pretend it was too dark for me to see him, but I stuck to my story. They couldn't shake me. Yeah, it says so here. <laughs> I remember this one. <laughs> Miss Burt was simply and smartly dressed and gave her evidence with considerable conviction. She said she... Here, what are you doing with that? You give me that... Sorry, I didn't know it was private. Well, it is private and personal. I'm sorry, I didn't know. A fine time to come calling. Yeah, just when we were getting acquainted. You stay here. I'll see who it is. Maybe I can get rid of them. Don't make me laugh. Come on, out this way. One thing I can tell you, he doesn't like newspaper men. Here, go out round the side of the house and you'll come to the road. Very foolish, Mr. Mathery. 
I'm afraid I shall have to arrest you. Who are you? Detective Sergeant Trevor, CID. Attempting to force an entry is what we call this. You'd better give me that knife. I'd recommend no violence. It could be most unfortunate. There's a patrol car around the corner. Perhaps you'll come along with me. Wonderful feat of engineering, this. Three miles a tunnel under the river. How did you know where I was? Records, Mr. Mathry. Your lady friend's car number's on file. And her address. Loitering with intent. Breaking and entering. I could smack you down on half a dozen charges. You're not forgetting, Superintendent. The American counter. I'm forgetting nothing. But you've forgotten plenty, it seems. I told you to stay in your ship. I warned you once and once wasn't enough. So now I'm putting you on your ship. I'm handing you over to your captain with a short billy do. And I only wish I could be there to see what happens to you when he gets it. You want to get rid of me. I saw the evidence, I tell you. I saw it. Take him away. There's the ladder. No! Here, what do you think you... All right, he asked for that. Put him on board his ship. Get him out. Slow down a bit, we're getting near it. Yes, I think it's a second on the right side. Here it is, right here. This dock gate. Lightness at all. So you've lost him, have you? Well, now you're going to find him again, aren't you? Trevor, maybe they didn't teach you this at your training college, but an officer who loses a prisoner under escort is liable to some pretty nasty charges. So my advice to you is get him, and get him quick! Good evening, Mr. Presty. Sorry to disturb you at this time, but they sent me around from the station. Yes, yes, what is it? We're looking for a man, an American seaman. Name is Paul Mathry. Mathry? Mathry? Oh, yes, he did come to see me a few days ago. When was it now? But come in. You haven't seen him since, Mr. Presty? The CID seem to think he may be trying to hide here. Oh, no, not since. He hasn't been here. When was it now? I can't remember exactly. All right, sir. Well, uh, they want him on some pretty serious charges, so if he does turn up, uh, let us know right away, will you? Yes, I will. Yes, of course. That's it, that. Serious charges. He seems such a nice young man. Well, sorry to bother you, Mr. Presty. Good night. Good night, officer. Goodness me, all this excitement. I wonder, would you mind finding the key for me? My eyesight, you know, it's not as good as it was. Thanks a lot, Mr. Presty. Yes, well, shall we go up? Yes, issue desk. Uh, Miss Anderson? Please hold the line. Thank you. Hello? Oh, where are you? Everything's okay. I'm at Prusty's. Prusty's, the tobacconist. Well, the police were around to Mrs. Hanley's last night. What happened? Helena, I don't want to say too much like this, but... 
I, I, I'm really onto something now. I can't give up. Real evidence, Lena. How wonderful. I, I want to hear about it. When, when can I see you? When are you free? Tonight? Right. Oh, and, and bring my shaving kit with you, will you? Uh, only be careful. Don't let the police follow you. They may be still watching the house. Oh, yes. I, I'll keep my eyes open. Yes. I, I, let's go now. Bye-bye. Uh, take care of yourself. It's a ridiculous situation. Ridiculous. I can't see that you come out of this very well either, Dale. I took all possible precautions. After all, it was your suggestion. Yes, yes, I know all that. The point is the fellow's at large and seems to be valid. Has his ship sailed, by the way? Well, this morning's tide. Well, that's something. Now we can arrest him for illegal entry and detain him ourselves. We've got to find him yet. I know that, Superintendent. That's your job. Any information you give to the press must be carefully worded. There must be no hint of any connection with the... Uh, with past history. I oh, would just say he's wanted in various charges and give his description. The public can often help us quite a lot in these things, you know. It's most unfortunate. The wrong kind of publicity could be very damaging to me. To my chances of nomination as a parliamentary candidate. The man's violent, Dale. I think I should be afforded police protection in the circumstances. Very good, Sir Matthew. But handle it with discretion. Tact isn't your strong point, is it, Superintendent? You're rather like a bull in a china shop. I do my duty, Sir Matthew, as well as I can. I had the evidence right in my hands, just for that one moment, and then she grabbed it. Well, couldn't you see what it said, or who it was from? No, it wasn't signed. I didn't have time. <sighs> I shouldn't have tried to break in. I should have waited. Louise wasn't bribed, Lena. She blackmailed the killer. That card was her weapon. <sighs> to think I was in the same house with a man, with that man who sent my father to his living death. Oh, if only we had the card. Well, you can't leave here now. It'd be much too dangerous. Oh, the police will be watching her house. There was something else about that card, too. What? I don't know. Something familiar. I was trying to take in so many things at once, I, I didn't have time. You know, Paul... What? I think we really should have some help now. We, we can't do anything more just by ourselves. Yes, but who? Well, I know someone, I think, who would. He's a journalist here on the Clarion. He, I know him quite well. I think we can trust him. What's his name? Dunn. Robert Dunn. Oh, he's a good man, Paul. He, well, he helped me once when I needed help quite badly. I, I didn't know there was anybody else, Lena. I mean, I just I hadn't thought about it. No, Paul. You don't understand. He is... Oh, Lena, you know how I feel. Send your friend over if you still want to. Of course I still want to. My father was convicted of murder, wasn't he? I guess that rates me pretty low. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm sorry you felt you had to say that. Matthew, from what I hear, you've been having rather a, a lot of unwanted attention from our city police. Yes, you might call it that. It's interesting. Very interesting. As you see, I'm a journalist. I like to hear other people talk. Can you talk whilst you shave? Oh, sure, sure. Sit down. <laughs> I'll tell you a story, Mr. Dunn. That's what I like best of all, Mr. Matthew. A good story. Yeah. 
My copy, Mac. Yeah. I think I ought to read it. Stuff. I won't print it. You're wrong, Mac. It's a big story. It could make national headlines. Mm. It could also land us right in the dirt with Chief Superintendent Dale. Our crime reporter would love you for that. All right, I'll try and put it another way. Nothing doing, Bob. The prosecutor on the Matthew trial was a bright young barrister, since knighted, with ambitions to stand for Parliament. Not Sprott, was it? Matthew Sir Sprott. Matthew Sprott. Now, wouldn't the powers that be in Clarion newspapers get some satisfaction from seeing Sir Matthew lose a little face? All right. Show it to the legal boys. If they say it's okay, we'll roll it. Thanks, Mac. Mm. Hey, the police are still looking for that young fellow. How the hell did you happen to find him, anyway? Well, it's called an unexpected dividend from my golden heart, Mac. Mm. <laughs> I call it obstruction of the police by withholding evidence, and you know what that means. But we all see these things from our own point of view, Superintendent. Now, my view is that... I'm not interested in your view, Mr. Dunn. I'm interested in where you saw Paul Matthew. Perhaps I didn't see him. But it says here... Ah, yeah. yes, it says there, but let's be our age, Superintendent. Sorry, sure you're not going to tell me that you still believe everything to read in the newspapers. Come up to you, Superintendent. <laughs> I wanted to tell you, McEvoy. I've had a call from the Home Office today asking me for a full report. Now, I've been through every scrap of evidence in this trial, and there's no doubt in my mind that Mathry was guilty. However. However. Yes, Sir Matthew. Justice has been done. Mathry served a long sentence, and as an officer of the court, therefore, I intend to move to the Home Secretary that he should now be released. What a stinking little hypocrite. Of course, we'd be delighted if the release comes through, Sir Matthew. What about the inquiry? No, I'm afraid we can't agree. That our campaign is unnecessary, or that it's just sentimental nonsense. We intend to press for an inquiry. Very well, McEvoy, I'll speak plainly. I know what your paper's trying to do, damage my reputation and prejudice my chances of election. I'm going to spike your guns. Matthew will be released, but I shall oppose any inquiry. Let him pull all the strings he wants to, Mac. We're catching up on him. Never once in his life has my known that man admit that he was wrong. This time, we're going to make him. Um, to the editor of the Clarion, sir. I have information from sources very near to the Home Secretary that by the time this letter appears in your columns, all charges against the unfortunate Paul Mathry would have been dropped. You got that? Uh, if, sir, you still have information as to his whereabouts, I would beg of you to give him news of this and so bring a gleam of hope to a man who has been so wickedly wronged. This could be it. Here it comes. In the case of Patrick Mathry, the Home Secretary stated in the House this evening that he saw no reason to set up a court of inquiry. In view of the length of time Mathry had served in prison, it was intended to release him at an early date. So, the old boy's coming out. That's not the end of it, Mac. That's not the end by long chalk. Seems your friend, Mr. Oswald, has been 
putting some pressure on the Home Office for you. They've even granted you a temporary permit of residence, which means you don't have to jump on the first ship that sails. All I want to do is get my hands on that postcard and ram it down Dale's throat. Yes, but don't jump the gun, Paul. Police are still keeping a watch on Miss Burt's bungalow across the water. But she could destroy that card any time. That's not very likely. That card's as good as an insurance policy to her. A bank balance. Yeah, I guess you're right. Paul, there's something else I want to tell you before we get to Mrs. Handley's. What's that? Uh, Lena asked me to explain. She thought I'd make a better job of it, but I don't think I will. We had a little argument the other night, and she hasn't been around to see me since. Yes, she told me. You see, I first met Lena when she was junior typist on a newspaper. It was when she was 18, in Toronto. Canada? She never told me she met you there. No, she wouldn't. I'll get over the next bit rather quickly, if you don't mind. As I say, she was just 18. One night she'd been working late in the office, and she was on her way home. It was dark. There was nobody about. A street gang saw her. Three of them grabbed her. She didn't have a chance, Paul. They always remember their faces when they appeared in court. They've always been rather proud until then of being a newspaper man. Until we published the whole story. Her name and picture. So I walked out of my job, came back home. And Lena? I wanted to do what I could to help. She didn't have any family. So I arranged a job for her over here. When she arrived, I moved her in with Mrs. Handley. Then I faded, as gracefully as I can fade, right out of the picture. I'm sorry, Bob. I misunderstood. I had it all wrong. Well, there you are. Lena wanted me to tell you. my father when you saw him at the prison this morning? Fine. He looked very fit. But I think you'll find he's changed a bit in 20 years. I was just a kid. I don't know what I'm going to say to him. You've managed. Would you say the name of this place was you've taken him? It's not far now. It's a small hotel. They've given you and your father what they're pleased to call the private suite. Oh, you seem to have thought of everything. I wish I had. Here we are. This is Jack Hancock of the Clarion. Mr. Mathra's son. Come on in. This is your son, Paul. Hey, hello. You've grown to be a big fella. Don't stare at me. Have they been looking after you all right, Mr. Mathry? I uh, ordered some clothes for you. I can't get anything to drink here. Was that your idea, keep you off the drink? You can order now. Jack, ring the bell. Anything you like, Mr. Mathry. It's on the house. Whiskey, whiskey, that's my drink. Twenty years behind those walls. Day after day, nothing changes inside. You've grown up. Across the Atlantic Ocean, be with the girls. While I've been in there eating that muck, watched by those stinking guards year after year. But I'm going to make them pay now. They're going to have to pay for what they did to me. This is your girlfriend. Yes, this is Lena. But I'm through with this. I'm going out. You've got your girlfriend. 
I'm going to find me one. Don't go out tonight, please. Stay here. We have so much to talk over. So I'm going out. Shocked at your old dad, eh? Oh, listen, son. I'm going out to get stinking drunk and then find me the company of a woman. And I won't pick the first one I find. I want her young and I want her good looking. Got any money? Yes, I have money. That fella Dunn isn't very generous with his money. You'll have plenty of money very soon. That's why we need more evidence to force an inquiry, some compensation. Compensation? What sort of compensation do I get for that? Six strokes counted by the governor himself, timed by the stopwatch. They have a doctor there, too, just to make sure the water doesn't kill you. Don't forget that sort of thing, I can tell you. Sometimes I dream about it. Dad, what you went through must have been horrible, but going out like this every night isn't the answer. Isn't it? Well, I haven't finished yet. This has just whetted my appetite. Okay. You go out again. I've got something important to do. I'm getting out of here. I've had all I can take. Oh, wait and speak to Bob. He's only calling the clarion. Oh, Paul, please understand. Your father... I understand everything. And I know who's responsible. She's sitting pretty over there in that little bungalow with all that police protection. And I'm going to get that evidence. Then I'll show them all what she's done to him. Oh, Paul... <laughs> something familiar about it. I recognize the handwriting. Give it to me! Oh, no, Louise, this has been your mistake for too many years. I need it now. Give it to me! Swine, you damn swine! You a woman! Since when have you been human? Surprised to see me at home, eh? Nothing you do surprises me. Well, I'm sick and tired of their company. Dirty lot of sponges. They take my last shilling and then laugh at me. Do you know why? Because I don't fit now. I'm a freak. Done for. You're not done for. Look, I've got the evidence that will get you a pardon. Pardon? What's the use of a pardon now? I tell you I've had it. I never did the murder, but it's them that murdered me. Come in by the canal tonight, I nearly threw myself in. Oh, that's great. That's a fine way to repay me for what I've done for you. Yes. You've been good to me, son. I'll give you that. Thanks. And now you want to take the easy way out. Well, drown yourself if you want. But let me tell you something first. I'm ashamed of you. Why don't you stop feeling sorry for yourself? You're going to get some money pretty soon. You can make a fresh start. I got you out, didn't I? Why can't you make the best of the years I've given you? I couldn't do it, Paul, not now. Dad, you could. I'd help you. I'd stay over here and I'd help you. You'd do that? Would you do that? Of 
course I would. I feel all in. I think I'll go to bed now. Telling me once that. Thank you. That you didn't think you would ever want to get married. Yeah. Devote your whole life to a man. Do you remember? Yes. Sorry. How do you think about it now? Still feel the same way? No, I think I've changed, Bob. Because when I asked that question before, I. I had rather a personal interest in the answer. Perhaps you realized. Yes, I did. Well, hope it works out all right for you. With your wild American. I love him, Bob. I love him very much. <laughs> See Mr. Enoch Oswald, please. Is he still in the building? Your name, sir? Mathry. Paul Mathry. Oh, yes, Mr. Mathry. Mr. Oswald's expecting you. Would you take the private lift to the top floor, please? Thank you. for you. She told you, I know. Yes. Why, why have you come to see me? I wanted to find out about you. You killed that girl. Myrna Spurley. Did you know that her face was the face of a Madonna? I thought she could be saved. I was wrong. Saved? From the world, from the flesh, from the devil, from Mary Magdalene. <laughs> That's how I saw her. I never dreamt that she would betray me. How did she betray you? Well, I gave her money to try to help her to alter her way of life. I, I was a slave, a slave to the face of the Madonna. She swore to me that she belonged to me and to nobody else. As I found out that night, it was a lie. The night you killed her? I arrived back from Edinburgh. She'd written to me there. I arrived back in the middle of an air raid. I managed to reach the house just in time to see somebody hurrying away. Man. My father. She told me that she was to bear a child, my child. And she... She just... I'd seen a shadow hurrying away from her. I lifted up my hands. She looks so calm. Because, you see, these hands had crushed the devil out of her. The face of a Madonna. But you sent my father to prison for your crime. No, for his own. We're all sinners. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Your father and I, we've both paid, as the Lord ordained that we should. We've all paid, all excepting the woman taken in adultery. But God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. 
He plants his footstep in the sea and rides on the storm. You, Paul, you are the instrument of the Lord. You have brought her to the judgment seat. You are the avenging angel. She, too, must pay. And what about you, Mr. Oswald, the great benefactor, the man of influence? How is your future going to look when I give my story to the police? The Lord takes mercy on the repentant sinner. I shall await his judgment in this place or in some other place. Good night, Paul. you anymore. You're safe now. You're safe at home. It's gonna be all right. He was dreaming of something that happened to him, but it won't happen anymore. Thank you. 